Hi guys, welcome to Prague ICU. Today we are going to give you the most important stuff related to volume resuscitation, blood products and hemocoagulation in ICU. What groups of solutions can we use? As a first line we have crystalloid solutions. The second line include colloid solutions and blood products. Crystalloids are salt solutions used for intravenous infusion. The concentrations of electrolytes in these buffered solutions more closely resemble those of plasma. The most commonly used crystalloids are normosaline, Ringer's lactate or Hartmann's and plasmalite. The cheapest crystalloid is normosaline, which consists high amount of sodium and chloride, 154 mmos per liter. Then there is ring lactate, which contain lower amounts of sodium and chloride and 4 mmos per liter of potassium. It also contains calcium and lactate. The most expensive crystalloid is plasmalite, containing balanced amount of sodium and chloride, but containing high amount of potassium, 5 mmos per liter. Isotonic saline is still frequently used, despite concentrations of sodium and chloride are higher than those found in plasma. pH is 5.5. Indications are hyponatremia, brain injuries or hypochloramic metabolic alkalosis. Complications include hypernatremia, hyperchloramic acidosis and peripheral edema. Ringer's lactate is largely used in aggressive volume resuscitation from blood loss or burn injuries. However, Ringer's lactate is a great fluid for aggressive fluid replacement in many other clinical situations, including sepsis and acute pancreatitis. pH is 6.5. Plasmolite indication is fluid replacement on ICU, intraoperative fluid replacement, hemorrhagic shock and clinical conditions requiring rapid blood transfusions, mild to moderate metabolic acidosis, also in case of lactate metabolism impairment. The solution is contraindicated in patients presenting with hyperkalemia, renal failure, heart block, metabolic or respiratory alkalosis or hypochloremia. Glucose infusions are hypotonic infusions that can be used to correct free water deficits and as a maintenance fluid if there is a free water loss. We use 5 to 10% dextrose infusions for correction of hypernatremia or as a maintenance fluid therapy. The most frequently used colloids are albumin and gelatin. In contrast, hydroxyacetyl starch and dextrans are not used anymore. Colloids are crystalloid solutions containing a soluble high molecular weight compound. Colloid containing solutions are rarely used as a first line restative fluids for the management of hypovolemia or hypovolemic shock, not due to bleeding. However, some clinicians advocate the administration of colloid solutions, particularly albumin, in those with limited response to crystalloid solutions or those in whom hypoalbuminemia is thought to be contributing to shock. Albumin is the most expensive colloid. Since albumin is derived from donated human blood, it does carry a theoretical risk of infectious disease transmission. It also possess possible allergic reaction. Sodium usual concentration is 154, hence be careful in hypernatremia. Here you can see several studies published on the topic of albumin in ICU. 4 and 5% albumin doesn't decrease fluid requirements very much. In contrast, 20% albumin may achieve hemodynamic goals sooner, but for some reason this doesn't influence the mortality data. The use of hyperoncotic albumin has been used in individuals with intravascular volume depletion but total body volume overload, as a replacement fluid, as an adjunct to large volume paracentesis, or as a post-cardiac surgery fluid. Gelatin is prepared by hydrolysis of bovine or porcine collagen. Gelatin has a relatively low molecular mass and expands plasma volume for only 1-2 to two hours, after which it is metabolized and excreted via the kidney. In this table you can appreciate content 
or three main gelatins used in ICU. This is a reference to an important study from 2016 related to use of gelatin. Gelatin was associated with increased risk of anaphylaxis, bleeding, renal failure, and mortality when compared with crystalloids or albumin for treatment of hypovolemia. The conclusion of authors is that until well-designed randomized controlled trials showed that gelatin is safe, we caution against the use of gelatins because cheaper and safer fluid alternatives are available. Hydroxetyl starches are highly branched glucose-based polymers that are derived from amylopectin. Several studies have suggested that hydroxetyl starch solutions have increased rates of death, acute kidney injury and need for renal replacement therapy. Therefore, they are not recommended for use. Dextrans are similar to HES. Dextrans can have a wide range of molecular weights but are purified to specific molecular weights. Dextran 70 kilodaltons was the most commonly used and studied. Dextrans as a class have been associated with anaphylaxis, coagulopathy and renal failure by precipitation by the renal tubules. They also impair blood cross matching by obscuring the red blood cell surfaces. Finally, I would like to cite results of one of the most important studies on the topic from 2019. CVP was significantly lower with crystalloids than with albumin, hydroxyl starch or gelatin. Mean arterial pressure was significantly lower with crystalloids versus albumin or gelatin. Significantly higher volumes of crystalloids were administered versus hydroxyl starch. Volume administered was numerically higher versus albumin. Compared with the albumin group, cardiac index was significantly lower in the crystalloid group. And finally, all mortality and 90-day mortality were significantly lower for crystalloids compared with hydroxetyl starch. Now we will move on to blood products and hemocoagulation in ICU. Before administration of these products, we should be aware of possible risks of transfusion. Transfusion of blood products carries many risks. Transfusion associated circulatory overload, transfusion related acute lung injury, transfusion-related immunomodulation, or transmission of bloodborne pathogens. Compatibilities of blood products are summarized in this table. The most frequently used blood product is red blood cell transfusion. Red cells are stored in refrigerators at 6 degrees Celsius for up to 42 days. Each unit contains volume of approximately 250 to 300 milliliters. One pack increases approximately hemoglobin level by 10. Infusion rate is about 1 to 2 milliliters per minute for the first 15 minutes and then as rapidly as tolerated. The complete infusion shouldn't exceed 4 hours. Half-life of transfused red blood cells is about 50 to 60 days. On the left side you can appreciate stepwise approach on how to decide when is the best time to give blood transfusion. One platelet transfusion volume is approximately 300 milliliters and is expected to raise the platelet count by approximately 30,000 per microliter within 10 minutes of the infusion. For an average size adult, one pack of platelets are transfused over approximately 20 to 30 minutes. AB0 matching of platelets and recipients is not essential, but is preferred because AB0 incompatible platelets may have shortened survival and incompatible donor plasma may produce a positive antiglobulin test and a small degree of hemolysis. Half-life of transfused platelets is 2.6 days. Indications for platelet transfusion and transfusion thresholds or target are summarized in the table. Fresh frozen plasma is a licensed plasma product that must be prepared from whole blood or apheresis and frozen within 8 hours of collection. FFP contains all of the coagulation factors and other proteins present in the original unit of blood, slightly diluted by the citrate containing anticoagulant solution used to collect the blood. Plasma volume is approximately 250 ml per unit. One unit increases clotting factor 
by 2.5%. We should appropriately dose FFPs, 10 to 15 ml per kilogram, equivalent to 4 units in an average adult. The dose of FFP should always be at least 10 ml per kilogram. FFPs have the highest association with trally. Infusion rate is typically around 10 to 20 ml per kilogram per hour, although more rapid transfusion may be appropriate when treating coagulopathy in major hemorrhage. We should always consider treating vitamin K dependent coagulopathy with prothrombin complex. On the right side, we can see summarized indications for transfusions of plasma. On this slide, you can see calculations for one adult therapeutic dose of FFP. Plasma shouldn't be used to correct excessive anticoagulation with vitamin K antagonists or other causes of prolonged INR in the absence of bleeding. On the right side, there is a summarizing table of AB0 matching. Here you can find the summarized content of all previously mentioned blood products. Our precipitate is prepared by thawing fresh frozen plasma between 1 and 6 degrees Celsius and recovering the precipitate. The cold, insoluble precipitate is refrozen. It contains fibrinogen, factor 8, factor 13 and von Willebrand factor. Indications include acute DIC with bleeding and low fibrinogen, severe liver disease with bleeding, prophylaxis for surgery when low fibrinogen is present, and finally in hypofibrinogenemia associated with massive transfusion. Cryos require thawing before administration, which causes delay during massive transfusion. Cryoprecipitate can be infused as rapidly as tolerated. AB0 compatibility is recommended, but any AB0 type component may be used. Based on their strong safety profiles and ease of use, fibrinogen concentrates may be preferred over cryo as a source of fibrinogen. Indications include treatment or prevention of bleeding in individuals with inherited fibrinogen disorders and in treatment of DIC or dilution coagulopathy with bleeding and a low fibrinogen level. In contrast to FFP and cryo, it has the following advantages. It has a minimal risk of infections. There is accurate and consistent dosing because of standardized concentration. There is low volume infusion and we can administer it rapidly as it doesn't require thawing or cross-matching. Generally, we administer 1 to 2 grams in active bleeding. Prothrombin complex concentrate is a combination of blood clotting factors 2, 7, 9 and 10 with protein C and S. It is a human-derived pool plasma product, which is virally inactivated. PCC indications include treatment of bleeding and perioperative prophylaxis of bleeding, in acquired deficiency of prothrombin complex coagulation factors, deficiency caused by treatment with vitamin K antagonists, in overdose with vitamin K antagonists when rapid correction of the deficiency is required, and also might be used in dark reversal. Tranexamic acid is a synthetic derivative of the amino acid lysine that inhibits fibrinolysis by blocking the lysine binding site on plasminogen. The only FDA approved usage for tranexamic acid is for heavy menstrual bleeding and short term prevention in patients with hemophilia. Dosing is as follows. Novo7 is a novel product and contains activated recombinant DNA human coagulation factor number 7. Its indication is mainly in patients with hemophilia. Vitamin K administration is one of the methods used to reverse the effects of coumarin. Patients with severely impaired liver function do not respond well to vitamin K supplementation and coumarin induced coagulopathy is not easily reversed. Doses of vitamin K should be minimized in order to prevent refractoriness to further anticoagulation. However, in the setting of severe coagulopathy with life-threatening bleeding, a dose reduction is not appropriate. The dose of vitamin K 
in patients with INR above 10 without bleeding is 2.5 to 5 mg. In patients with INR 4.5 to 10 without bleeding, the oral dose is lower, 1 to 2.5 mg. In patients with serious bleeding, 10 mg of IV administration is recommended, plus administration of reversal agent. If clinical evidence of coagulopathy persists, despite the administration of a single dose of vitamin K, we repeat the dose in 48 to 72 hours. Protamine binds heparin chains. We administer 1 mg of protamine to reverse 100 units of circulating heparin. If dose of heparin is unknown, give 50 mg of protamine. We shouldn't exceed 50 mg over 10 minutes, as hypotension might occur, plus excess of protamine has also anticoagulant effect. Dose of protamine used is dependent on the time since the last dose of heparin was given, as seen in the table on the right. Last part of this lecture is devoted to hemostatic assays. TEC is a viscoelastic hemostatic assay that measures the global viscoelastic properties of whole blood clot formation under low shear stress. TEC shows the interaction of platelets with the coagulation cascade. TEC doesn't necessarily correlate with blood tests such as INR, APTT and platelet count. Here are some useful tips and tricks for interpretation of results. Rotem is the second assay. Rotem is more resistant to mechanical shock, which may be an advantage in the clinical settings. Here again, we provide useful tips and tricks for interpretation of results. Thank you for watching Prague ICU and stay tuned for more educational videos.